When you live in an apartment, you don't really have as much space as you really could use here. Uh, this right here, behind all of these wondrous bins, is uh, my, my shelf for extras, is, uh, is what I basically call it. Um, pretty much when you uh, collect all this junk, uh, you end up getting a lot of bonus items here and there, uh, including uh, three e-readers that are just hanging out there. Um, pretty much, I have bought, like, a decent amount of, like, uh, bins here to just house a lot of this stuff. So, like, <laughs> and, uh, I had too many of these, uh, Nintendo DS accessories that I had to throw them in a garbage bag. But, uh, I have a lot of bins over here. Uh, pretty much, uh, these right here are broken controllers <laughs> that I can just use. Uh, for whatever I really feel like. A lot of this is, like, broken stuff, um, or games that I bought specifically just for, uh, a Scott the Waz episode. So, uh, you know, we have, like, the, the dual pack Monkey Ball and, uh, Sonic Forces, and then, like, a random Deus Ex <laughs> Collector's Edition. Just stuff that I don't really have specific room for. There's more DS accessories right there. Um, so... I just put a lot of that stuff in bins at the moment because uh, I just don't have really any space anymore. I mean, most of this is pretty filled up. Um, but right here is uh, pretty much all of these extra um, games. Uh, and a lot of the time, like, I would just buy a lot of stuff just for a specific video. So uh, these specifically are the uh, digital-only physical copies of games. So, uh, you know, Resident Evil Revelations requires an internet download. Um, and there's like props, like I had to buy that joke book, uh, all for, uh, that digital only physical games episode. And then here's like a bin of Amiibo that I don't have space for anymore. They originally resided in, uh, in the, uh, the closet over there, but I don't have space for them, uh, in there anymore. Maybe I can, uh, move stuff around and find, find a way to make it work. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, recently I've just been leaving it right here. Um, and then this is just a bin of other stuff that, um, I might need for, you know, stuff in the future. So I just kind of throw them all in the, um, in the bin there. But this is what, uh, this is what I'm talking about. This is pretty much just a, uh, a shelf of random stuff. Uh, this used to be much bigger and then I kind of, uh, consolidated it mainly because, uh, I just, you know, like, it's a shelf of extra stuff. I don't really need it. Some of this stuff, like, I just didn't really have anywhere else to put. Um, so, like, the shelf above it, uh, this is just kind of, like, moving, you know, this this is a, this is my handheld shelf, pretty much. So, it goes, you know, DS, 3DS, uh, Game Boy Advance. So, that, these are, like, the, the few Game Boy Advance games I made covers for. Uh, pretty much all you have to do is you, uh, you get a bunch of blank uh, DS cases because most DS cases have uh, Game Boy Advance slots in them. So uh, you do that, and then you print the cover art off online, uh, mostly from the cover, uh, I believe it's called The Cover Project, uh, a website called that, where uh, you can look up a lot of different uh, templates for, for game box art. And uh, that way, you get something to put your Game Boy Advance games in. It's not perfect, It's you know it still looks you know handmade, but... It helps a lot, mainly because uh, you kind of forget you even own, <laughs> even own a game like that. Uh, if it's you know, because most of my Game Boy games, I just kind of have in that bag right there. Um, you know, there are solutions to store the uh, the original Game Boy games, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, uh, but it's a bit more tricky. The Game Boy Advance games are a bit more like uh, just buy DS cases and, and you're good to go. And there's a bunch of blank ones that I still have. Um, but eventually, uh, eventually I'm gonna put, there, there's a bunch more Game Boy Advance games in my, uh, Game Boy sack there, um, but eventually I'll, I'll get to, like, making a case for all of them, but then again, you know, like, if I make a case for all of them, um, I'm, that, that's more space taken up, so I, I kind of have to wait until I get, uh, until I get, uh, more space in general, uh, but this shelf is, like I said, it's pretty much just a bunch of random stuff, like, uh, this is a, uh, <laughs> this connects a GameCube, uh, you, you, it has a GameCube, uh, connector, and then you can insert other, um, 
you can insert other Nintendo controllers. So that's a nunchuck port. So that means like you could use a, a classic controller uh, for a GameCube game, or let's say there's a, uh, I know there are a couple of uh, Wii games that only support the GameCube controller and not the classic controller. I believe one like that is Sonic Rider Zero Gravity, where you, it supports the GameCube controller, but not the classic controller. So uh, supposedly this would let me use the classic controller in that game. Uh, and then Super Nintendo, and then uh, that's N64. Um, so that that would be kind of like fun for experiments, just seeing if certain controllers work with certain games. Um, and then I believe I bought this for the Wii accessories video, but I didn't really have... Um, I don't think I included it, mainly because I kind of wanted the, uh, the, the, the full-on uh display the portable display for the wii as in like these are all third-party products but uh this was a uh, a power adapter to uh plug this into like a cigarette lighter in your car uh where you can power the wii with this and then uh you could also get the uh the standard uh or just the third party like uh you know portable display for the wii and that way you could play it in the car but uh i only ended up getting the car adapter um so maybe eventually i can uh incorporate that somehow then there's that and then there's the um the uh nintendo 64 hotel controller uh which was done by uh uh what's the name let me see LodgeNet. all i needed to see was the first couple letters <laughs> yeah so this was like in uh hotels where uh you know it would be connected to the tv and you could, uh, you know, it, it was a way where it's just like for a certain fee, then you could play Nintendo 64 games on your hotel TV. But it was usually pretty expensive. So, uh, and also like I never was able to do that because um, pretty much I'm pretty sure my parents were terrified of me doing anything in the hotel room that would like charge anything to their card. Uh, and they knew that would be, definitely be pretty expensive. However, I remember using these to uh, change the channels on the TV. Uh, at least a couple of these game controllers that were hooked up in hotel rooms, you could use them to uh, change the, the TV channels with like the D-pad or something. And then there's, uh, you know, stuff like uh, Mario Party E and then a Pokemon Mini that I still haven't opened. Uh, so this is at least a slightly more uh put together shelf this shelf used to be a lot bigger but uh i consolidated it i ended up uh i ended up getting rid of a bunch of stuff but uh yeah th these are these are my extras slash i don't know where else to put any of this stuff so uh the first thing is this is my uh water damaged chibi robo ziplash copy this thing is messed up uh whenever i have to throw uh something in the toilet that's the that's the sacrifice and then this is uh i believe this is a similarly similar situation with uh the 2ds xl i always had a 2ds xl that i would kind of beat around um that's the one that uh got destroyed in uh the uh well i mean i think i hit it with a hammer in the call of duty on uh, ds episode and then uh it pretty much completely just broke in half on the mario kart 7 episode uh, so I always had this, um, but I also had a, a 2DS XL that was a capture unit, um, and that just stopped working. So um, I I got a second one that was just kind of like a you know a dummy copy, pretty much just to uh, just to toss around and destroy. Uh, and uh, I just have this box. And uh, when I didn't, you know, I, I destroyed the uh, the 2DS so much that. Uh, it was just at that point, like, uh, I think in some episodes, I just threw the box around. Uh, so this is kind of like my uh, my go-to, uh, you know, if I need to destroy something, I guess. Uh, I own a copy of this because um, I, uh, <laughs> whenever I go in my uh, my my uh, tirade, tirades of uh, wanting to own a bunch of Wii U stuff, uh, I realized that there were a couple of Nintendo Select re-releases of uh, games on the Wii U that were not published by Nintendo. There was Sonic uh, and All-Stars Racing Transformed, and there was Just Dance 2015. And I bought this on eBay because the picture showed a Nintendo Selects version of this, and it was not. <laughs> it came in like this, and I was like, okay, great. 
Um, so, um, that was kind of lame, but, uh, I used it, I used the case of that because the case, uh, was in pretty good condition. It was a new copy and it was only like 10 bucks, 15 bucks. So, uh, I replaced the case, I replaced the case of another Wii U game that I thought was kind of in worse shape. And, uh, yeah, you can kind of see like just, you know, it's, it's not the worst, but, uh, the, um, the, the case is a little, uh, a little scratched up in, uh, ways there. And then over there, this is my second copy of Pokemon Channel because I bought this on eBay. And uh, if you could maybe be able to tell, let me see if this is obvious. Yeah, yeah, that kind of shows. This is a, uh, this was just printed off with a printer. I got this in and I was just like, this looks a little like, this looks a little blurry. This looks a little like poorly. Oh man, this is just a printed off box art. It's unfortunate. When you when you want to kind of like give feedback on eBay, I kind of always forget to. I'm like, ah, I should definitely like contact them, and then, it, then too much time passes, and I'm like, ah, man, <laughs> like at this point, like I can't really do that. But it's a little more obvious. Eh, maybe not. Maybe not on camera, but at least like in person. At least you can see like the bottom of the uh, page. You see that white outline, which shows like this was just. And it's, the case isn't even in good shape. The case has all this garbage on it. So it's just like, okay, well, at least give me a good case. Uh, I mean, the game is in there. Nothing else is included. But, uh, yeah, I was like, well, I have Pokemon Channel, but not really. So, uh, there's that. And then, uh, these, these came with a, with a DS Lite I got. I wanted to get a white DS Lite, which for a while there, it was really hard to find DS Lights that were in good condition. Uh, pretty much all DS lights kind of had that smoker funk on them, uh, or they had like broken hinges or whatever. Um, but I finally found one and it was in the box and that was really cool. And it was only like 50 bucks or something. And, uh, it came with these two games. Uh, Mario 64 DS was just inside the console, just the game. And, uh, it also came with new Super Mario Brothers. So it's just like, I'll take it. I already have both of those games, but why not? Um, here, uh, we have, um, the, uh, Spider-Man 3 plug-and-play, which this came, like, a month after I made the plug-and-play games episode, so, oops, uh, and, uh, this one was actually bought beforehand, uh, this was the, this is the Backyard Baseball plug-and-play, but, um, I just never got around to, uh, recording footage off of it, uh, it might have been involved in the episode in some way, like, I might have shown it, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is, these are two that, like, I just, uh, I didn't really talk about in the episode. This one, I physically couldn't. This one, I probably could have, but I didn't feel like it. Uh, and then this is, uh, oh, <laughs> there's a Joy-Con grip, uh, because where else would I put it? Uh, and then, uh, of course, this is the big boy. Uh, this is the R-Zone. This is a fun time. Uh, this is like a, uh, <laughs> this is a, uh, Tiger Electronics, like, LCD game console, where uh, you strap it on your head and it displays images uh, onto this um, little reflective piece of plastic and it's all in red and black and it's just basically like any other um, tiger uh, tiger game console where it's just like it's just it's <laughs> that's all it is where it's uh, let me see if I can uh, kind of So it like reflects onto, uh, let me see if it can even see that. Not really. You can kind of see that. It's obviously clear when you're wearing it, but it reflects it onto there and it's supposed to give like the illusion that it's like, like a, let's say like a nineties version of like the, um, like, like a smart glasses kind of technology, I guess. Uh, in reality, it's pretty bad. Don't quote me on that. You know, I don't want anybody knowing that I think this is pretty bad, but it's 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 not the greatest. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I got that for free <laughs> with like an eBay purchase. I bought something on eBay, and then the person included this because they were like, "Hey, I have a free R zone." Probably because they were like, "Dear God, I need to save space." This guy seems like he'd enjoy an R zone. Um, next up, we have uh, this is this is my next two uh, DS. Uh, that I can just use for, uh, whatever, uh, <laughs> whatever damages. Uh, this is just, like, a, 
Uh, there's like a little wire poking out and stuff. It might still work. Doubtful, but uh, you can see like at least like the uh, this isn't really a crack since these screens are pretty plasticky. It's mostly like these are scratches. Um, but this is another one that I use for uh, if I ever need to, uh, you know, just damage a system in front of everybody's eyes. Um, I don't know. This is mainly, uh, this was used in the Chibi Robo Ziplash episode. And uh, this was, I got this because uh, I, w I was frantically trying to buy uh, a, uh, a 3DS capture card because the uh, the one from the Call of Duty on DS episode, I desperately needed to capture Call of Duty on DS footage. And, uh, you know, my capture card wasn't working. So uh, I went on eBay and I was scrambling. I was like, I need to find another 3DS capture card. So I got this. Uh, this is just a hacked 2DS XL where it has like a wireless capture card where it streams to your computer and then you capture the footage that way. It's garbage. It barely works and even if it does, it's so laggy it does it it doesn't work well. If you ever see stuff like that where it says wireless capture card, don't don't get it. Um so I just kind of had this because I bought it accidentally and I was like, eh, you know, I can probably get use out of it. And uh yeah. That was the use I got out of it. So next up, uh, we have, what do we have here? Is this Sonic? Yeah, this is the Sega Classic Sonic the Hedgehog. This is like a re-release of Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, I ended up getting, let us see, uh, over there. It's the uh, regular, regular release of Sonic. Uh, so I replaced that. But uh, this is kind of like, a, this has been a part of my collection for a while. So I don't really want to get rid of it. Uh, but it goes on the extra shelf. Maybe when I get more space, then I can put it apart as just the regular Sega Genesis collection. Uh, but for the time being, it's just kind of there. Um, yeah, and then we have uh, the stack of games that I just kind of have hanging out here. Uh, here we have Yokai Watch. Uh, I got this at five below for five dollars. They have some sick deals some there some uh, <laughs> there sometimes. Um, and uh, they they randomly have like some games that are kind of uh, you know uh, overstocked at places where they just want to get rid of them. Um, five below is kind of like a place where it's all oh, everything is five dollars or below. And uh, but they're damn liars now because now they have a ten and below section. I'm just like you're five below, damn it. Uh, but uh, they had uh, they had copies of Yokai Watch, Animal Crossing, um, Happy Home Designer, and Star Fox Zero plus Star Fox Guard, brand new for five dollars there. Which uh, regardless of what you think of those games, uh, that's a pretty good deal. Like for five dollars for new copies of these games, not bad. Um, so I got this, and I, I, so I have two copies of it, uh, there it is, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, uh, you know, like, I don't, I don't need this, but I have it, uh, so, whatever, um, but, uh, you know, they, they randomly have, uh, some good deals there every now and then, um, most of the time, it's not, it's most of the time, it's just, like, they just have a bunch of copies of Battleborn, but, uh, that was there, so it's just, like, that's pretty cool. Uh, this is a messed up copy of, I believe, World Class Track Me, that's what that is, and I just drew Dig Dug on it. Uh, that was for the Used Games episode, and, uh, I still have this copy. And then here we have, uh, RE7, uh, this was a, uh, let me see, oops, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was uh, for something. I believe definitely for used games. Uh, you just get a bunch of games that you can, you know, you just get a bunch of doubles of games, so it's just like, eh, you can do that. Uh, Mario Superstar Baseball. I've had this copy for a while, and uh, it, it never worked. It just didn't work, and I decided to put, like, extra manuals I had for the GameCube in here. So, uh, this was interesting. The This Twilight Princess manual, uh, it was just randomly included in the Twilight Princess for Wii copy that I got used. Uh, I just, like, it had all the manuals, like, it had the Wii manual, but then underneath it had the GameCube manual, too. I was like, well, what? what? That's interesting. Uh, and then, uh... I, I got a Pokemon Coliseum manual from uh, a random lot that I had. Um, actually, this might have been the case for Pokemon Coliseum because, uh, is it underneath now? Um, yeah, I randomly, 
Uh, I might have, let me see, is it there? No, uh, or it might be eventually. I mean, like when I dig into this a little more, but uh, I had just this giant case of just like loose CDs of like, you know, like games I didn't have cases for. And uh, I bought from like an old coworker. I got a bunch of his old games for like 50 bucks. And uh, it came, he, it came with like, just like a, a disc only copy of like Pokemon Coliseum. But it came with a case, but it didn't come with any cover art, but it came with a manual and stuff. But uh, the disc didn't work. And similarly, uh, this Mario Superstar Baseball copy that I got uh, from a game store, uh, that never worked. So, uh, yeah. But uh, with Mario Superstar Baseball, I at least have the cover art. That was fun. And then uh, this was when I was buying a bunch of stuff for uh, the Game Stores episode and the um, used game episode, just getting all these... Um, all these GameStop cases. Uh, this should, yeah, it's just the copy of Deus Ex Human Revolution. It was unfortunate. I think for the Game Stores episode, I wanted to get a bunch of these. And uh, the GameStop employee was actually being good when uh, when I was kind of like, no, I want you to be trash. I want you to be garbage. Uh, because like I, I handed them like these copies of games that I picked off of the shelf that were just kind of like, oh God, these are just the regular GameStop cases. No, uh, you know, I wanted the regular GameStop cases and they swapped the regular GameStop cases out for the actual cases. I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Cause like I wanted to get these versions specifically for the, um, for the episode, but uh, you know, uh, I ended up getting them for $10. Yes. I might've been one of the few people to actually get these, uh, actually want these uh, garbage cases. And we have uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, the Yellow Avenger. I think I got this and like the uh, the copy that I had had like, uh, I didn't realize like the sticker residue, like that's on the uh, that's on the box art itself. Like, I can't really do much about that. Like if I open that up, yeah, that's on, uh, that's on the art itself. So I'm like, ah, oh, man. And then on the, uh, on the case itself, the, uh, it's a uh, kind of sticker residue. It's kind of gross. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I upgraded the copy eventually. And then here we have uh, this messed up copy of Fling Smash, just with the case all messed up there. Uh, I don't remember what happened to this one. I assume this is uh, the case where I was showing how wet Fling Smash is. So it got a little wet. Uh, yeah, got a little water damage there, unfortunately. But uh, it's still just a just a part of the collection. Uh, case is just messed up though. We have the Sonic, uh, Sega Classic Sonic. Um, a couple of these were uh, bought in lots and and whatnot. Just uh, MLB the Show, Madden 16. I mean, I don't actually uh actually I do own MLB the Show 14 on PS3 mainly because um I just find it interesting. It is one of the few PS3 games with the uh, the blue header. Like, a couple of games are like that. I think a Lego game is, like Lego Lord of the Rings, maybe, or Lego The Hobbit. Um, but um, but uh, I just thought that was interesting just because, like, you know, like, even though they tried to do that, they kind of went back to the black label. Um, so that's interesting. But I think these were bought for probably Bargain Bin Christmas. Um, but I'm kind of like, I'll keep them around because, like, I don't know, I might need a Madden game for the PS3. Or just having uh, having that blue blue spine. Or it's just the fact that uh, I can't really sell these, so might as well uh, hold on to them. Uh, the unfortunate thing about the sports games is that they all have these uh, stickers on them that are incredibly difficult to get off. Like, you can get them off, but they're going to be... If you get them off, there's going to be a lot of sticker residue where it's just the, um, like, this, this shiny aluminum-like like design or whatever just kind of like sticking to it to, uh, to the case so even if you want to use these cases because like this is a great condition case for the ps3 like there's there's barely anything wrong with it but i can't do anything with it like i can't replace one of my uh good ps3 games with this case because uh this uh, mlb sticker is just always going to be there unfortunately um and even if i peel it off the sticker residue is going to be just so strong that it's just not going to be worth it um, this was another, uh, situation of, like, getting that for, uh, used games. 
Um, I, I think I got this on eBay specifically. I was literally like, I, I just saw it on eBay alongside uh, this, uh, this GameStop copy of Geist because uh, these are situations where like you can probably, it's one of those things where like you can find these out in the wild incredibly easily. However, the problem is uh, when you're specifically looking for them, it is hard as hell to find them. So it's like, you know, like, you, you know, like when you're not looking for these things, you can find them everywhere, like these GameStop generic cases. But when you actually need them, because I needed them for the used games episode, uh, I was just like, all right, I just need to find these on, uh, on eBay somewhere. And uh, this was one that I also found at eBay. Some of these I got just at the GameStop stores in general. But uh, this is how they look now. And I wanted these ones with the with all the uh, with all the uh, cartoon characters and uh, just everything. And how like they all came with like weird like uh, yeah, it's a PS2 <laughs> it's a PS2 case. And somehow they they had all the uh, literature on the inside. Uh, this one. Uh, yeah, well, I definitely replaced the case of Call of Duty World at War with, uh, Metal Gear Rising. Uh, yeah, I think I just had a, a duplicate of Metal Gear Rising on 360. I remember I got my copy at Target on clearance for, like, five bucks, which is pretty rad. It was pretty cool. Uh, but I replaced the case. I replaced the case of, uh, Metal Gear Rising because it was better, and I already had a copy of Metal Gear Rising on 360, uh, on my shelf. So I was like, ah, oh, well, I'll just replace uh, replace the Call of Duty World of War box because it was gross, as you can see. So, yeah. And also, this sticker just probably wasn't going to come off well. Uh, it's uh, from 2019. And uh, some stickers are really easy to get off, but it kind of matters how long a sticker's been on a surface. If a sticker's been on a surface for over a couple months, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tear a bit more. Um, then we have iToy Play. I, I bought all the iToy stuff for the iToy episode, so, uh, I didn't really need this, but, uh, thankfully, this is a good quality PS2 case, so if I ever need a PS2 case, this fits the bill. Uh, these two games were bought for the Game Stores episode, I remember that. I just kind of wanted to show, like, how GameStop stickers were, and these are two pretty cheap 360 games. Duke Nukem Forever is incredibly cheap uh because nobody really wants it so it's pretty easy to get copies of and i was just like hey that looks like the sticker is gonna be kind of annoying to get off so i got these for uh the game stores episode uh, and then let's see what we got here uh these are more used games from the game um the game stores episode this is one of the most pathetic games like, i i think i've talked about this multiple times just how messed up this thing is the fact that they used a ps3 case that was too small for uh <laughs> for the cover art for this like at least with this like you know like you know they they don't have the cover art. but with this for some reason they had the cover art not the original case so they put it in here and the case itself is just falling apart and it's just like you know it makes you wonder it just makes you wonder like wh like how did it get this way how did you have the cover art and not the disc um uncharted 3 i think i got that for um i might have been uh i i forget if that was for uh that, that might have been for a, uh, in a couple of different i think i got that specifically at gamestop because this one i got on ebay i saw that i just thought it was fun that they had they used a wii case for a need for speed hot pursuit on um whoops on 360 and uh, that's Medieval Moves on the PS3. I think that came with one of like the used game lots that I got for used games. So there was that. This one I also got on eBay. Just a, it used a 360 case, I believe. So that's interesting, and that's an original Xbox. Then we have uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations and uh, Madden Await on the PSP. I think this was uh, this was the copy from the desk. This was the copy on my desk. And uh, I think it got messed up. There's like been a couple of episodes where I kind of push everything off the desk, and uh, this one doesn't close properly anymore. Like, uh, you know, like uh, the top snaps shut. This bottom part is always kind of like I can't, I can't shut it properly. Um, so, yeah, I got a new one. Uh, so uh, this one just kind of like lays here, kind of just like in retirement. 
Um, and then uh, this one, uh, this one I wanted just for the amount of stickers on it. Again, much for used games. Most of these were from used games. Uh, but, you know, if I ever need to show, like, just sheer sticker abuse or sheer cover art abuse, then uh, this is my go-to game for that. Another ride toy game. Um, and this might have been a situation where I bought a Wii U game and I didn't realize I already owned it. Uh, that is unfortunate when you start to own all this junk. Of course, I'm very grateful that I own all this stuff, but you end up kind of forgetting if you own, <laughs> if you own one of the games or not. Um, especially when it's Your Shape Fitness Evolved 2013, you kind of start to forget you own it. Um, so I think I got this. It was definitely pretty cheap. Um, but, uh, thankfully, again, like the Wii U case, pretty good shape. So, uh, if I ever need to, uh, replace a Wii U case, um, I do have Your Shape Fitness Evolved 2013 on the back burner. Uh, and then we have one more stack of on my, uh, extra shelf. Uh, this is, uh, this is interesting. This is a display-only copy of Star Fox Zero. This was definitely for, uh, for, like, game stores where, uh, this, you know, this was available, you know, like, right, right when it released. And, uh, they would just put this on the shelves being like, hey, you know, it's available now. Um, so, you know, there's nothing inside. It's just a, a display copy. But, uh, that was given to me as, like, an extra for an eBay purchase a lot of sellers do cool stuff like that they just are like hey take it <laughs> probably because like they just can't get rid of it but they're also like if, if they see you're buying something very very specific they might be like oh i'll just throw that in for you why not you seem like you'll enjoy that uh disney infinity uh i think this this was purchased for um bargain bin christmas um, and I probably got Disney Infinity a couple of times for Wii U, as in, like, probably twice, just because I forgot that I owned it. Um, and it's only a dollar, so it's whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, decent case, so I can use that for, uh, a replacement case. Um, but Star Fox Zero, this is my Five Below copy. I actually bought a couple of these, um, but they kind of just sat on my extra shelf for, like, two years so i just thought like you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna get rid of those like i had like three new copies of star fox zero that i bought from five below just because i thought it was kind of fun that uh i got star fox zero for five bucks um but uh yeah this is a this is just a brand new copy and um i just thought like eh, like I, I like i'll just have one like it's fine it doesn't matter uh, this was, uh, I think this was, uh, Lego The Hobbit. I got this without realizing I, I already owned it. Uh, so, uh, this was a mistake purchase. That's the problem with a lot of the Wii U games. Um, you know, uh, the Lego games, I kind of forget which ones I own and which ones I don't. Because, uh, you know, a lot of them released on Wii U. So, it's kind of a, uh, you know, it's kind of a problem where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is only five bucks. Okay, I'll get that because, uh. You know, I might need it as a part of my Wii U collection need. Uh, but, um, yeah, I think I already own that. Uh, WWE Smackdown, shut your mouth. I just bought this because it was kind of funny. <laughs> that was about it. Uh, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. I believe, actually, uh, this is a printed out uh, label because I wanted, uh, yeah, this is <laughs> another copy of Lego The Hobbit. Uh, yeah, if we open, yikes. Um... Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. I think... I think what it is, is, uh... I printed this this label off myself. Possibly. I'm not sure. What is... Well, I think... Okay, what I think happened was I scanned the copy of this game's cover art that I got from GameStop. You know, I got this from GameStop. And it was Lego The Hobbit. And uh, I scanned it in because... Uh, there was an instance where I wanted to pretend it was Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Um, so I printed this copy, I printed this cover art off. I scanned in this Wii U template from the GameStop cover art, and then I changed it to that. And apparently, in the process, I lost the actual Lego The Hobbit GameStop cover art. So, rats! Uh, <laughs> an extra copy of Madden 08 on PS2, because you can never be too safe. And then SSX on 360, another game that I got because it looked like garbage. So I got it for the used games episode. So uh, yeah, that is my extra shelf.
pretty much all the games that I don't really have a place for, or they're kind of just prop purchases. They were kind of just like, oh, I got this for a Scott the Laws episode. Or um, they're games that I own multiple copies of that I buy by mistake, or I just get as a part of a lot. Or uh, these games are literally too disgusting to put on my shelf.